Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And if just in case you hear any like meows or anything like that, I'm taking care of my parents' cats. You know, they're they're out on a trip and everything like that, so I'm babysitting him. So if you hear a meow or hear him sort of jump in front of my camera, I apologize for that. Though that's just how my cat, how the cat, my cat Rocky is. He's very affectionate and everything like that. So apologies in advance if that happens if he jumps into camera but it is what it is so but anyway we got four stories to cover um this week including um nintendo holding a direct for their upcoming game super mario wonders um an interesting situation surrounding um starfield especially with the whole review code situation um it's supposedly a rumor about what nintendo's next system might be under the name nintendo focus and the story from last week i didn't get a chance to cover which is basically the npt or the circana if i'm saying the name correctly for july um 2023 and if you're interested in where i got a source of these informations links will be in the description of this video down below um assuming you're watching this on youtube but before we get started though i i like to do what i like to call the um my choose the quick my choose scent stories that kind of caught my attention but i'm not going to go into a huge amount of details uh the first one is that konami has recently announced that they're a remaster of their game sudugin if i'm saying it incorrectly one and two hd remaster has been um delayed though so unfortunately those who are looking forward to it are going to have to wait um a little bit um longer for that one a little bit unfortunate but you know sometimes these delays um and sometimes these delays unexpectedly um, happen though. We also learned that um, Double Dragon Collection has been announced for the Nintendo Switch and other systems um, as well. It will contain um, the arcade uh, version of, I, I believe it will contain, you know, the versions of Double Dragon 1 and 2, Double Dragon 3, I believe for the NES, um, Super Double Dragon, Double Dragon 4, and Double Dragon Advance, which is sort of a the Game Boy Advance version of the original Double Dragon um, classic though. Um, certainly nice for those who are into the Double Dragon series. It has seen somewhat of a resurgence with games like the Double Dragon Neo to Double Dragon Gaiden and everything like that. So very nice that it's see that that's happening though. We also learned that basically the Nintendo Switch has surpassed the Wii um, lifetime sales in the U.S. though. Obviously, I mean, that's pretty impressive for a, for a system like the Nintendo Switch to really um, do that though. Um, I'm very curious to see if it will overtake, you know, the PS2's lifetime sales though. So I'm very curious to see if it can um, accomplish that and whether or not Nintendo can keep that momentum going, especially when their next system comes out um, eventually um, to be exact. We also learned that the upcoming Marvel Spider-Man 2 for the PS5 um, is could be closer to, like, say, 100 gigabytes um, in sizes, though. Which, if that's true, some of you may want to consider spending money on a, you know, updating that SSD on your PS5 and everything like that. Uh, um, or start making, start clearing some spaces out of it, though. So, it's certainly something to keep in mind for those who are looking forward to picking up Spider-Man um, 2 and all. We also learned that PlayStation Plus Essential Extreme Extra and Premium will be seeing a price increase. Sony has um, recently announced though. And so far the response to this has not been um, pretty good. Some folks out there have decided they're going to cancel their PlayStation Plus as they're not um, pleased with this um, price increase and all. Um, some are going to be okay with this. Some are not. So it depends on who you're asking um, this question towards though, but obviously it is certainly a very um, controversial um, decision from Sony side, whether or not this will have a negative impact on the PlayStation um, Plus restriction service or not. Um, remains to be seen, but right now some folks have voiced their opposition of, of not being pleased with this um, announcement and everything like that. We also learned that Xbox has hired a Sony veteran to become the new director of the partnership um, in Japan. Basically, this is um, Microsoft's push to try to be have more of a 
have more of a footing in the Japanese market and try to bring in more um, Japanese developers. Obviously, getting Final Fantasy XIV on the Xbox system is certainly a step in the right direction given the popularity of that game and also it will be very interesting to see um, if they could bring maybe you know more Japanese developers or have much have a much better you know better approach into the Japanese market all it's still going to be difficult especially you know with the Nintendo Switch being the top dog there and all but it, it certainly is they're paying more attention to I think the Japanese market and Japanese developers than you could say they were than they were say during you know the Xbox One era um, and all. So we'll see how this um, looks though. We also learned that with the release of Starfield and all, um, they basically put up a new supposedly a music video from Imagine Dragon called Children of the Sky and all. I'll be honest with you, I'm not really a big Imagine Dragon fan or anything like that, but you know the video isn't that bad and the song isn't that. Um, bad either though so it is definitely um something to look at especially for those who are looking forward to picking up um starfield and everything like that whether you have the early access or waiting for september 6th to come uh, we also learned that there has been some talks about the possibility or at least a talking point from pure xbox that points to the possibility that we could that gear upcoming gear six could be fully um open world and everything. Now, granted, nothing's been confirmed. We'll have to wait to see if that turns out to be true, but it would be kind of interesting if they do decide to take Gears um, 6 in a direction of a open world style, because I think most, majority of the Gear games, I haven't played all of them, but I think most of them have usually been, you know, confined, you know, linear adventures and everything like that. So to see it t go in a, more into like an open world approach, would be very interesting to see if that does actually um, happen and all. We also learned that Voltron, the development studio behind Saints Rose and Red Faction, has been closed um, effective immediately. This has to do with Embracer Group's um, restructuring of several things. Plus, it comes off the heels where the Saints Row reboot did not do as well as they had hoped that it would do. And there was certainly some controversy surrounding that game and everything like that. It's very unfortunate to see Voltron um, basically... Yeah, you know, Volantin, if I'm saying the name correctly, though, um, basically shut down everything like that, though. I thought their Red Factor Remars edition was sort of neat. Yeah, so it's a little bit um, unfortunate to see that um, happen, though. I hope the, de the development team there, I hope some of them have able to find new jobs or everything like that. But very unfortunate, though. But sometimes when you have a game that bombs or performs badly, it could have this stuff, stuff like this could um, happen and everything like that. We also learned that Suda51 is wants to make a new Shadows of the Dam game. This had to do with an interview he recently did, I think, with Video Game Chronicles. He talked about how during the development of Shadows of the Dam, there were certain things he wanted to put in but couldn't, mostly because EA said they didn't want to see this or this or that. So it, it will be very interesting to see if that does happen. Obviously, they're do, working on a remastered version of the first Shadows of the Dam, though. We know that's coming. No word on any systems at this time, though. I'm hoping it comes to the Nintendo Switch. But if the game, do, if this remaster does very well, it might open the door to a actual um, sequel to Shadows of the Dam. I mean, after all, No More Heroes got like four entries: the first, second, Traffic Strikes Again, and No More Heroes Three. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that a Shadows of the Dam two or a, another entry could basically happen and all. We also learned that Borderlands 3 Ultimate Edition has been announced for the Nintendo Switch, though, which is certainly very interesting to hear that announcement, though. Um, basically, it will contain all of the DLCs that have been out for the game, though. Um, supposedly, it's going to be out in October. Uh, there have been some reports. There are some reports coming out that there will be a physical version, but we don't know if it's going to be just a physical version with a piece of paper with a code on it or actual cart and if so um is it going to be the full game in it or is it going to have to download the rest so there's still some questions about this version though and we have yet to see any actual gameplay or actually any screenshots let alone we don't know if gearbox is handling this or if tune me up which did the borderlands um legendary collection um basically for the nintendo switch they handled that version currently we know they're working on the batman arkham trilogy for the nintendo switch we don't know if they're handling this one either so so certainly nice to see borderlands 3 come to the nintendo switch but there is still some questions in regards of that version 
And last but not least, there is a report coming out that supposedly the U.S. Ray Board has Beyond Good and Evil 20th Anniversary leaked. It seems as though that basically it does seem to indicate that Ubisoft is planning to do a version of that game and could be coming to multiple systems, including the Nintendo Switch, which is certainly nice considering that Beyond Good and Evil 2 has been in development hell for so long. We don't know what is going on with that game. We've learned that several people have left the studio. Um, some have been burned out. It seems that game has fallen in development hell, and God knows when we'll see that title or if we'll ever see uh, Beyond Good Evil 2. But in the meantime, it does seem like it's possible the first entry could make its way over to multiple systems, including the Nintendo Switch and all. <clears throat> okay, with the Quick My Two Cent part now done, well, no movie or TV ones for, I think, I believe this week. Um, we'll get started with our first story, and this one has to do with the July 2023 Sar Sardana or C-I-R-C-A-N-A, or formerly known as the NPD, um, to be exact, though. So, apparently, we have the July one that has recently came out, though. It does seem it's a little bit quiet, um, to be exact, for this one, though. I'm waiting to see how September and October ones are going to be, especially with a lot of high-profile releases ranging from, basically, you know, Starfield to Spider-Man 2 to Super Mario wonders and all so i'm very curious to see how those titles are going to um play out but in the meantime according to what we've learned from july and this is from several sources including matt piscatella in terms of the um top in terms of the top rank bet july 2023's top 20 games though they had remnants 2 at number one um, Diablo 4 at number 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2022 at number 3, Hogwarts Legacy at number 4, Final Fantasy 16 at number 5, Pikmin 4, a, a new entry, um, at number 6, um, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom at number 7, Street Fighter 6 um, at number 8, Elden Ring at number 9, it was originally at number 16, I wonder how much of that has to do with Armor Core 6. Um, MLB The Show 23 at number 10, Star Wars Jedi Survivor at number 11, Mario Kart 8 at number 12, which at last month it was at number 12, but it's right there now, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 um, at number 13, which ironically last month, last month's ranking, it, they had it ranked at 83, so uh, kind of interesting to make that jump from last month's ranking to number 13 in all. Okay. I got an avid that. Number 14 is Minecraft. Okay, rock. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, number 14 um, is Minecraft. Um, number um, number 15 um, is FIFA 23. Number 16 is Exo Primal, which is a brand new entry at number 16, though. Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales at number 17. Marvel Spider-Man, um, the first one at number 18. I'm thinking most of that is building up hype for the upcoming Spider-Man 2. Um, number 19 is Dead Island um, 2. And number 20 is Call of Duty um, Black Ops 3. Over in terms of the 2023's um, or year to date in terms of the top 20, we have Hogwarts Legacy at number one. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom at number 2, Diablo 4 at number 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at number 4, um, Star Wars Jedi Survivor at number 5, um, Resident Evil 4 2023 The Remake at number 6, MLB The Show 23 at number 7, Dead Island 2 at number 8, Final Fantasy 16 at number 9, um, Street Fighter 6 at number 10, um, FIFA 23 at number 11, Dead Space 2023 at number 12, Elden Ring at number 13, Madden NFL 23 at number 14, Mario Kart 8 at number 15, Minecraft at number 16, The Last of Us Part 1 at number 17, Remnant 2 at number 18, God of War Ragnarok at number 19, and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet at number uh, 20. In terms of, in terms of the in terms of the hardware side of things, they say PlayStation 5 was the best-selling hardware platform in both units and dollar sales during July 2023, with Switch ranking at second across both measures. PlayStation 5 continues to lead 2023 hardware market across both units um, and dollars. 
So, obviously, the big winner from this one is Remnant 2. I mean, that one basically shot up at number one was pretty interesting. Obviously, people definitely um, enjoy that title. I haven't played the first one or the second one, but it seems that obviously a lot of people did um, enjoy that one. So, obviously, Gearbox Publishing must be uh, pretty happy about this, though. Um, Diablo... Diablo 4, I mean, despite some mixed response to that title, it does seem to be that that one is still um, hanging on. It's at number two and everything like that. Pikmin 4 entering at number six, I mean, that's not um, bad and everything like that, especially for a, another entry in the Pikmin series, though. We have seen it um, shot up in Japan, though, that has done pretty well, although it's recently got knocked down due to Armor Core 6. Um, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is still um, hanging on. Elden Ring being at number 9 is sort of very interesting. Obviously, I bet you a lot of it has to do with Armor Core 6, as I mentioned before. And I'm very curious to see where Armor Core 6 will rank when August um, numbers come in, though. Where does it exactly um, go and everything um, like that? So, obviously, the big winners are Renmin 2 and, in a way, Pikmin 4. I mean, for, and for a series that doesn't have as big as, say, as Mario or Zelda it is, that's certainly not... Um, bad numbers or anything like that. So very good um, for Pikmin 4 and all. Overall, um, I would say not not huge, but not not wow numbers or anything like that. I will say seeing Ecto Primo on there is sort of interesting and all. Remnants 2 is probably the big winner for July though, and seeing Elder Rings go from number 16 to 9 though is that's interesting as well. And I'm very curious to see. Uh, what happens when August comes out and where Armor Core 6 is probably, if I'm getting the number right, Armor Core 6, where that is going to um, rank indeed. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part two. And this one has to do with the rumors surrounding Nintendo's next system as, some are, as one person is claiming it's going to be called um, Nintendo Focus. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of my My True Scent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at a story that sort of was coming or sort of has been out there. And that is basically talks about Nintendo's next system going by the name of Nintendo's Focus. Now, as some of you are aware, we're hearing basically some information come out here and there regarding um, Nintendo's um, next system. In fact, recently Insider Gaming has did a report about supposedly the Nintendo Switch 2 or the Switch successor, whatever it's going to be called, was shown behind closed doors during Gamecom and only a few people or a few developers got a chance to see it though. So it, there's no doubt about it that to me, if this report's true, there's no doubt that Nintendo is, you know, they're obviously working on their next system, and we'll have to wait and see when they start officially revealing it. Some are speculating it could be sooner. Others can say, are saying, like, next year, and they're thinking a holiday 2024 is not out of the question. Well, another rumor seemed to have popped up this week that seemed to claim by someone who basically claim what they think Nintendo's next system going to be, going by the name um, by the name Nintendo's Focus. And while what he says certainly isn't out of the realm of possibility, Nintendo has been known to throw in a curveball um, oh, that's my cat a curveball here and there um, I'm still leaning on this one should be taken with a huge grain of salt because some of this sounds I would say um a bit, um, f let's just say a bit far-fetched, shall we say. Um, there have been several articles on this, but this one seems to point to um, um, Tom's Guide. And here's what some of the article, this is what it says. Quote, going by the name Jonathan Bark, this leaker has taken to social media to offer up some intriguing information. The biggest morse is that Switch 2 will actually be called the Nintendo Focus, and the source has provided a logo um for um, the for the device, though, um, Bark also claims the name of the console. The name comes from the device's VR capability, which are not further explained. Um, it said to date, Nintendo has not entire has not entered the virtual reality area with a product of its own, unless you want to count that VR Labo thing, though. So we'll be surprised to see if the next next 
flagship device placed VR at its center. However, Nintendo has a long track record of surprising moves, and perhaps this is just um, the latest one. It says that, quote, the so the source also provides information about the launch lineup for Nintendo Focus. The console will reportedly come with a packed-in title called Reno Raymond Warrior, and this will be a 3D platform and core elements. And another key launch title will be a Mario Kart. The leaker doesn't specifically, specifically if this will be a new installment installment of the popular racing franchise or a port of the previous entry, such as Mario Kart um, 8 Deluxe, which itself is a switch port of the original Mario Kart 8 that launched on the Wii U in 2014. Um, it, the other titles mentioned by the tipster include a new F-Zero game called F-Zero Titan and Arms 2, a sequel to Switch fighting game. The latter is apparently set to release in 2025. Bark also indicates that Nintendo Focus will offer some form of backwards compatibility with Switch titles, but there will be a transfer fee of $2.99 per game, um, $3 to be exact. This will represent a very different approach to backwards compatibility than the PS5 and Xbox Series X, which offers um, features without um, cost. Now, it is worth pointing out this so-called leaker, though, doesn't have a track record or anything like that. Is it possible what this leaker is saying could be true? Again, it's not out of the realm of possibility, so I won't completely rule it out. But I tend to lean, I'm leaning more towards this is most likely has to be either a troll or something like that. I, I'm finding it hard to believe some of this stuff, though. I mean, again, like I said, Nintendo has surprised us before. Maybe this next system will have VR capability. That's that's always a possibility. But I just feel like th this has to be a, a troll or, or has to be fake to a certain degree. I'm kind of leaning more towards that. I mean, we've seen these fake things happen before. I mean, when Nintendo showed up during E3, there was always this claim of a list of what games they will announce. And a lot of it tends to be either too good be, to be true or too far-fetched or it feels like it just feels like there's so many red flags right here and right now i feel this so-called leaker and claim i just think comes off as basically being maybe too far sometimes it sounds like a bit of a stretch on a lot of it though i mean again it could be true we don't know for certain and we'll have to wait to see about basically once Nintendo reveals their next system whether a lot of the claims these leakers are making are true or not. I mean there were a lot I remember hearing a lot of leakers claim that the next Nintendo Switch was going to be an OLED and it will be 4K and everything like that. The OLED part turned out to be true but not this 4K Switch that some have claimed that it was going to be. So I would take this information with a huge grain of salt until we know officially whether or not what the, the sequel to the, the successor to the Nintendo Switch is, what it's going to be called, and everything um, like that. So overall, I'm leaning towards this one. I'm think I think this is too far fetched. I, I think this has got to be somebody trolling or trying to get attention. I find some of the stuff not hard to believe though it's not out of the realm of possibility it could be true but right now i'm leaning towards this being unlikely not true um at all though <clears throat> okay uh, we're going to take a quick break and when we get back we'll get to part three and this one has to do with sort of a situation surrounding um starfield review codes um going out to several influencer and outlet. It's sort of a situation that seems to have emerged though. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of my Mind You Sent video for this week. And for this one, we're gonna be taking a look at Starfield, particularly with review codes it's sort of, as it seems as though a situation has kind of sort of popped up this week in regards of that, that situation and all now as you all know probably the reviews have been out for starfield recently as the embargo for that has been lifted uh, last time i checked it was currently sitting like at an 87 to like a 90 and all so i mean it's all right i don't take metacritic or open credit as serious 
serious though, I tend to look at it as more like giving you an idea of what critics are basically um, saying though. And some outlets have given it a good high score, others have sort of been in the mix about it um, to be exact, nothing negative um, at this time. But regardless of the, the reviews for those games, it seems to be that the game seems to be off to a very good start. At least on Steam, it has currently concurrent player of 200, 230,000 concurrent players in its first two hours. This has to do with, you know, the early access at all. For me, though, I'm looking for, I'm going to try the game out when it comes out on Game Pass on basically September 6th. So I'm going, I didn't pre-order any additions or anything like that. But something that seems to have emerged with um, the situation outside of basically a leaker being arrested after allegedly leaking or stealing copies of the game and everything like that, um, apparently it seems as though that several news outlets or certain outlets have not received um, their review code. Um, one of those, of course, was Eurogamer that talked about it though, although recently they did an update saying that they just recently got the review code to Metro and The Guardian all. And it has certainly raised some questions about this approach that Bethesda has done. They've also blacklisted several publications like Kotaku and Jason Schreier and all. So it has certainly, some people are wondering why um, Bethesda is doing this and all. And you can have multiple reasons why um, they might be doing this. Um, to be clear though, I do think it's worth pointing out that um, Bethesda, like it or not, are kind of within their rights to do this, though. Yeah, after all, it is their game. They don't have to send out a review code if they don't want to. They could choose to set whatever terms they want to. I mean, hell, I mean, I could ask for, for all I know, I could ask for a review code for Starfield, and they could say no if they want to, to be exact. So they are within their right to do this. At the same time, I'm a little concerned to some degree when we see companies kind of do this. Even companies like Nintendo have done this as well. And what worries me is, the, like, if there's like a piece that actually is a legitimate, if like someone writes a piece that's actually legitimate about it, that they could be blacklisted and not get a review code or anything like that. So I'm kind of a little bit mixed on this kind of approach that not only Bethesda or any other studio um, in general though. Don't get me wrong. I do think Bethesda is well within their rights to do this. I'm not going to argue um, against that in any way. I'm just concerned of how easily they can abuse it and say, hey, we're not going to send you a review code or anything like this. Now, I don't know whether or not there is an issue between Bethesda and Eurogamer or The Guardian or Metro UK or any other sites that, be, that matter, though. It's just... It's a very, very interesting, it's a very odd situation to play out though. But nevertheless though, Bethesda is well within their rights um, to do this. So you can't, so I, I know some people are not going to like what Bethesda is doing. I can understand some of the criticism, but I also do think that um, Bethesda is well within their rights. So Overall, I think it's sort of odd that they decided to withhold review codes to certain outlets and everything like that. I can understand some of the criticism towards Bethesda doing this, though. But at the same time, you also cannot deny that Bethesda, like any other publisher and developer, are well within their right to do this. They don't have to send out a review code if they don't want to. They can set whatever terms they want um, to set, though. So... It is sort of an odd situation we saw play out, but either way, though, um, I'm still going to be looking forward to Starfield, nevertheless. I'll try it out on Game Pass and everything like that. So, yeah, odd situation with the whole review code situation, but it's, it's odd, but it's not something I'm personally, like, I think personally losing sleep over, um, to be exact. <clears throat> Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to our fourth and final part. And this one has to do with uh, my take on the Nintendo Direct that focused on Super Mario Brothers on Wonder. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay. 
Okay, and we are back with our fourth and final part of our my, of my, my <clears throat> excuse me, my My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at Super Mario Brothers Wonder, particularly the direct that it just recently had um, this week. Though now, Nintendo obviously had a, a well, a small Nintendo direct. This was one that's about like 15 minutes long, and so forth. So it certainly was focused squarely on basically you no know, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, and they did reveal a couple more details. Um, here and there about the game though i will say that it is definitely one of the games i am looking forward to for in october when it comes out though so in terms of how i felt about the, about the direct though i'm going to break down into what i liked and then obviously what i didn't like mixed or, or not 100 percent sure about um in terms of what i liked about what they showed off during the super mario brothers wonder direct though i will say visually super mario brothers wonder looks i mean really really good though i mean past mario games 2d mario games particularly the on the new super mario brothers series they weren't necessarily bad or anything like that but when compared to games like donkey kong country or you know like the rayman series or anything like that they or rayman you know origins and legends um it just the visuals weren't exactly that particularly good not terrible but not particularly great or anything like that so to see um the, what the visuals in this one was it looked really good it looked like the world was definitely a bit more alive and everything like that i'm very curious to see how the rest of the world will look like in super mario brothers wonder so for a 2d mario game i will say visually um it looks good though um i do like some of the new power-ups that they showed off in terms of such as the bubble power-up to the drill to even the elephant one though so where basically mario and his friends and yes you could play as other characters like daisy to even the yoshis and nibbits are in the game though although they can't use power-ups or anything like that and it certainly is um, very, um, very interesting indeed. And I'm very curious to see how they utilize some of these um, power-ups, including with um, some of the levels and all. The other thing that they showed off was basically the Wonder Flower, and I thought that one looked really neat. They teased about that during, I think, one of the Nintendo Directs, though. And it does look like the Wonder Flower, it seems to look like it will be in every level, although I'm not 100% sure. But it, they do talk about how this could, like, you know, change how some of the levels, you know, play out and everything like that. And it does add for an interesting take on the 2D Mario and some interesting gameplay mechanics. So I'm very curious to see how that is going to look, though. It looks really, really neat. And I'm very curious to see how each level will look or how some of the levels will look with the Wonder Flower um, in there, though. And then last but not least, we had basically the badge system that they showed off during the um, direct, during this direct though. And it does look like some of these badges are going to be helping your character in a way though, depending on what the situation may be. And also, I do think it might be a helpful tool, especially for those who may not may find some of the levels might be a bit challenging though i'm hoping that the game's difficulty will be on the same scale as you know new super mario brothers you know like we and you were in a that provide like a real challenge to a 2d uh, mario game so i'm curious to see if it's going to be like that and judging by having some of the badges that might be the case so but we'll wait um and see but in either case though i do think the batch system does look um interesting though as far as what I didn't like or mixed or not really 100% sure about though, I will say the online multiplayer part might be disappointing for some out there though. It does seem to indicate that the game does have online functionality as you can see other players and see what they're doing in the game and all. Um, and of course, somehow they can also help you if you revive your character if they die on in the level or anything like that. So that's kind of neat, but as far as online co-op goes it doesn't seem to be that's going to be the case um for the, the super mario brothers you know wonder and all now some folks might think that's a bit unfortunate there are those who would like to see you know like an online co-op though and in a way that could have been interesting to see though but obviously that's not the case or the direction they're going nintendo's going with um super mario brothers wonder so i can see how some folks might be disappointed with this but some may not be in any way also last but not least they showed off in promotion for super mario brothers wonder they showed off the mario red edition switch oled and honestly eh, i mean it's not 
horrible looking, but there, are be there have been better special edition Nintendo Switch Nintendo has done. This just looks like they just painted it red and that's it, though. They didn't really do anything unique or special compared to how they we've seen it with, like, Tears of the Kingdom or any of the other Zelda games or Splatoon, for that matter, or even Xenoblade Chronicles got something special. So I'm not really sure about this one. It just doesn't seem impressive. It might be impressive for some folks out there, but to me, it wasn't. Um, I will say overall, I do think that the presentation was nice, even though it was a short presentation, 15 minutes, um, to be exact, though. Um, I do think they, some of the stuff that was really neat, um, the power-ups look very interesting. I'm willing to give those one a try, though, and I will say visually the game looks, um, really good. I will say the online multiplayer part, um, might be disappointed for some folks out there because of the direction Nintendo is going with it, though. To me, I'm not really losing huge sleep over it, but I could see why some people would have loved to see a online co-op for um, basically um, this game and everything like that. And the Switch OLED or the Mario Red Edition, personally, I don't think it looks that impressive. It might be impressive for some folks, but to me, not really as much. So, yeah, but either way, though, I'm still looking forward to it, though. Picking up Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Um, it's definitely on my radar when it comes out in October. And I do wonder, given the success the Mario movie does, and whether that will have a positive impact on this game. I think it probably will, but we'll have to wait and see when the game comes out um, in October and all. <clears throat> Rocky, come on. Okay, uh, this concludes this My Two Cent video um, for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about the NPT or the Circa for July 2023? Are you surprised Remnant 2 made it to the top list though? Were you kind of surprised to see Pikmin 4 make it on that list in any way? Do you think Elden Ring jumping on that list is due to the fact of Armor Core 6? And do you think Armor Core 6 will make it into the August 2023? Um, less than all. What are your thoughts about this odd Nintendo Focus rumor? Do you think it's possible this rumor could be true? Or do you think this is just, there's so many red flags on this one that you think like, yeah, either someone's trolling or trying to get attention um, in any shape and any form and all. What are your thoughts about the, the Bethesda's decision to not send review codes out to certain outlets like Eurogamer, to um, The Guardian, to Metro UK? Do you think Bethesda was well within their right? Do you think it was the right thing for them to not send out these review codes? Or do you think that Bethesda maybe went a little bit overboard with that though? And finally, what are your thoughts about new Super Mario Bros. Wonder, especially the 15-minute Direct? Did the Direct convince you to pick this game up in any way, though? Are you looking forward to picking up this game? Are you looking forward to trying out some of the co-op or the power-ups in the game? Do you think Nintendo missed an opportunity to put online co-op um, in Super Mario Bros. Wonder? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you do like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You can do it through PayPal, me, Patreon, or Steam Labs. Links will be in the description of this video, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that'll be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye!